I think you guys are making me sick. <clears throat> when I'm running these, doing these tips videos, it's usually in the morning. It's early in the morning. And it's pretty dang cold right now. Oh, how cold? Let me show you how cold it is. In my barn. Okay. That's inside my barn. Still pretty cold, okay? I think that's off. Now I look like a little girl because you saw was 39. So anyways, I come out here and do these tips videos and I can't turn my heater on because it's too loud. It's and you can't hear me. So I had to leave my heater off and it's really cold in here. I'm trying to do these videos. My hands are cold and you guys better appreciate it because it's keeping me sick. All right, so we got a new qualifier to do in our quest to do all the qualifiers regardless if we go or not. I'll see my, I'll put a card up here for the reason why I'm not going to these. We've got Strength in Depth, which will be a 2019 sanctioned event out in London, England. Maybe I'll go hang out and crack a jazz if I go. So we've got Strength in Depth, which is a qualifier out, which is a qualifier that'll be in London, England. Um, they are only doing one week of qualifiers, right? So currently they have three qualifying events and four scored events. Um, one of them's that the one that has two, I believe, has a one rep max clean straight into like a thruster gymnastics piece. Um, the one that I did yesterday uh, is the one we're going to talk about today. That is event number three, <clears throat> and that is let's figure it out. Woo! All right, so let's walk through it. What do we have here? 3,000 foot view. We've got a nine minute AMRAP. I wrote that wrong, that's not a time cap. That should say AMRAP, so let's change that. So, AMRAP, okay, not a time cap, because if you can't get this done in nine minutes, then we have to talk, okay? So, we've got a nine minute AMRAP. We've got 20 single arm dumbbell cleaning jerks from the hang, which we'll get into, 50 double unders, 50 foot handstand walk, and another 50 double unders. Looking at it real quickly, we've got ourselves a shoulder and grip palooza. Yep. So let's walk through each piece and then we'll connect it back all together. So, first up, let's talk about dumbbells. So we've got 20 single arm, like hang clean dumbbell cleaning jerks. Um, I say hang because you're you're bringing it down between your legs, not touching the ground with it. It's not technically a cleaning jerk, we're touching the ground every time. And so it's kind of like, a kettlebell swing, but you're doing with the dumbbell. It is a clean jerk, so you have to touch your shoulder on the way up, um, so you can't just snatch the dumbbell. You have to obviously come in contact with your shoulder and then press it or split jerk it or push jerk it, just bring your feet back together. So, um, yes, and then you have to also split it 10 and 10. So you gotta do 10 on your left and then 10 on your right. You can't do all 20 on one hand. Um, you can't do 12 and eight or you know, eight, 12. You gotta do 10 and 10. I don't think they care whether you start with your left or start with your right for every round you come back to it, but you've gotta split it up 10 and 10. So I would like to transfer from this board over to the other side and show you a couple different ways of doing them though. So spin around. And we're back with Winston. Okay, so there's really gonna be two ways you can really go about, I think, doing these dumbbell clean and jerks. And that takes into consideration how you're swinging at the bottom and then how you're actually resetting from the top. So, let's talk about it. So, uh, first off, you've gotta come to, uh, you gotta deadlift it up, right? You gotta hang clean, you can't go straight from the floor overhead. So we've got it in the, we gotta deadlift it first before we start. That's obviously a given, okay? Um, how I did it was I swung it between my legs like it was a kettlebell snatch. So I went here and then I swung it back, right? And then I went straight to my shoulder and then overhead, right? Now, when you come down from the top, you've got a couple different options. There was no rules that the barbell had to come into contact with your shoulder on the way down before you reset. It'd be like the same concept as if you did grace, you don't have to you can jerk the bar overhead for grace and drop it and do singles and it doesn't touch your shoulder or you can reset it back to your shoulder and come back down to the ground. Totally up to you. Well, for me, um, I did, um, I think I did like 70% where I didn't touch my shoulder and 30% like I made a mistake and I did that. So these are what mine look like, right? So I'm deadlifting up, right? Swinging up, shoulder, and then I come back down, right? So it's not actually 
touching my shoulder on the way down, I'm just swinging it back through like you would a kettlebell snatch. Um, of course, the other way of doing it is when you bring it down, it con contacts your shoulder. I think it's a little bit slower. Depends on who you are, I guess. So that's really it, guys. It's really dependent upon do you wanna, does your dumbbell come back down to your shoulder when you reset? Or are you kinda like swing snatching it and pushing it out in front and let it swing all the way through? I like swinging it through because it seemed to me to be faster, but I will say when I got tired near the end of the workout, I did switch to where it hit my shoulder every time. So, yeah, you know, personal preference. Uh, back to the board. Hey, how did you, uh, how did you attack your dumbbell hang cleans? All right, we're back. So that's dumbbell hang cleans, pretty simple. There's really not a whole lot of difference in the way you can do it. The only really big way is bringing it, are you bringing it back down to your shoulder when you reset or are you just swinging from the top right down between your legs? Um, I would recommend not going outside your legs. You can, strength and depth was like, the dumbbell's gotta be between your legs or outside your legs. Um, I would recommend not outside the legs because now you're essentially just doing a dumbbell curl and I would totally not recommend that. It's less of a swing, it's more of a curl. That'll blow you up sky high and you need that bicep and you need that grip for the rest of the workout. So, that's dumbbell hang cleans. <clears throat> Moving on. 50 double unders. I really don't know what to tell you. It's 50 double unders. There's no strategy in this. Just do your double unders. If you break, start back up again. Um, if you don't know how to do it, I would recommend learning how to catch your last rep on your foot, uh, on one of your feet. That way you can lay the rope down nicely. It is a fast workout. So instead of getting down with your 50th rep and then throwing your rope on the ground, and then you know when you come back, you've gotta like find it and untangle it and make sure it's right. That wastes time. So I would recommend learning Jump rope, jump rope, jump rope. You're gonna have to do 51 reps, but it's worth it, I think. You'll, on the 51st rep, you'll catch your rope on your foot and you'll lay it down nicely. Um, that's an easy way of guaranteeing that you're not gonna have to come back and like grab your rope and untangle it and it's like a nine different knots. Um, but yeah, this is unbroken and this is fast. For me, double ones are single speed. If you watch my previous videos, you know they're all single speed. They're not gonna like, I'll try to pick it up near the end, but it's not like I'm, I can't really sprint double unders, so. Not a whole lot to say on double unders. Just do your double unders, and if you haven't learned to do double unders yet, spend time doing it. Moving on. 50 foot handstand walk. So the 50 foot handstand walk for strength and depth is gonna be 25 foot in length, and every five feet, is going to be a marking for points. So for walking 50 foot, you'll get one point for every five feet. So you'll get five points for finishing the 50 foot handstand walk. And that's how that works. So you have to tape the ground every five feet. Really simple. It's essentially the same thing as the open. And of course, if you fail before a multiple of five and the five foot increment parts, um, you have to restart at the last successful increment of five you completed. So if you fail it, if you feel at eight foot, you gotta go back to the five foot and restart. Um, and then again, just like the open, your hands have to start behind the line. It used to be in the past that we would all kick up past the line, which was great and amazing because it allows you to like skip on like three or four feet, but they're getting smarter and they're not allowing us to do that anymore. So anyways, 50 foot handstand walk. I thought this is the crux of the workout. Um, the dumbbell hand cleans, you could really only go so fast. It's not like you're probably gonna break them. They don't, they don't need to be broken up, personally. Um, double unders, if you're trying to go to strength and depth to qualify for it, double unders shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. You're just gonna plow through them. 50 foot handstand walk, I think, is the cornerstone of the workout because you're already breathing heavy and now you've gotta flip upside down and of course, it's very hard to breathe upside down, right? Your weight's on top of you, you're not in a normal position unless you like to walk around on your hands all day long. 
It's easy to catch your breath in the 50 double unders, but then as soon as you kick up a 50 foot handstand walk, your heart rate's gonna boom through the roof. You need to be able to feel comfortable and calm while you're inverted in handstand walking. If you spend a lot of time setting down your jump rope and waiting and shaking it out before you kick it, before you kick up, or vice versa, if you spend a lot of time on the opposite side of the 25 feet, so you've done your 25 feet and you're sitting there just shaking at your hands, you're gonna waste a lot of time doing that. You've got to move on these handstand walks. If you want to get a good score, you've got to get down with those double unders, step on that rope, lay it down, kick up, move. Get to the other side, you know, you, you drop down, you spin, you kick up and go again. You've got to be able to do it because that will get you a good score. If you spend a lot of time shaking it out and resting and because you might fail, then you need to go back and you need to continue practicing handstand walks. I am telling you this in a way for those folks that are trying to qualify. If you don't have handstand walks and you're just doing these for fun, then, then yeah, you're in a completely different category. Continue to practice handstand walking and continue to master that skill. But if you're trying to qualify for the strength and depth um, competition, then you've got to be good at handstand walks. And so you've got to be able to kick up and just move across that floor without thinking about it. So that's handstand walks. And then of course, to finish it up, it comes back to 50 double unders again, which I shouldn't really need to talk about, right? It's the same concept. Do them unbroken, single speed, don't mess up. Try to step on your rope. Don't throw your rope all over the place and try to have to like untangle it. You'll just waste your time. So again, on this nine minute AMRAP, we've got 20 dumbbell clean and jerks, 50 double unders, 50 foot handstand walk, and 50 double unders. If you wanna do good at this workout, this is unbro an unbroken set of 10 and 10, okay? If, you, if you're trying to qualify and you have to break it up into like five and five on an arm, you're gonna waste a lot of time. We only have nine minutes, which isn't that much time on the grand scheme of things, right? So you've gotta not be able to knock out 10 and then switch it and then go for another 10 right in the next arm, right? 50 double unders should be unbroken. Um, if you can go fast, go fast. I, I'm a single speed kind of guy, so I can't really go that fast unless I'm trying to surge at the end. Um, I did mess up a couple times on my double under, so I mean, it happens, to the, it happens to everybody. Like, don't get into the mindset that if you break a set of double unders because you missed it, like the world's gonna end. Like, just pick up your rope and continue going. You can save that time. You can make up that time in other places, but don't let it get into your head, okay? And then, of course, the crux of the workout is the 50 foot handstand walk. Um, this is the workout, right? Your ability to step on your rope, immediately kick up and do your, your 20, first 25 feet, get to the end of your 25 feet, get across the line, turn around, kick up and go for your last 25 feet. This is the workout. The ability to knock out quick 25 foot increments and not have to rest between is will make and break a good score in this workout. And then of course we'll come back to 50 double unders um, and then that's one round, and you'll try to go for as many rounds as you can. When I approach workouts like this, that have different installments or an AMRAP with different pieces, I always put my pacing times down, right? So when I look at this kind of workout, I will say to myself, I'll actually time each piece. So I'll say, okay, 50 double unders, how long does that take? Well, that's about 30 seconds approximately, right? And that includes the fact that you could probably do it faster than 30 seconds, but you have to take in consideration the time required to pick up your rope, the time required to lay down your rope, and the possibility of possibly missing a jump rope and having to restart. So 30 seconds for here and for here. A 25 foot handstand walk is also about 30 seconds approximately, um, depending upon transition time and kicking up. And then of course, 20 dumbbell clean and jerks. I think I timed those at 40 to 45 seconds. Um, and that really comes down to how close this is to your jump rope um, and how quickly you're grabbing it. And it probably comes down to um, what technique you're using, whether you're coming back down to the shoulder to reset or if you're swinging all the way through. So if we look at it, we've got 30, 30, 30. Um, so that's a minute through, that's 90 seconds. Plus let's say 45 seconds um, puts you at 215, right? So that's 215 per round. Now, of course, that 215 per round is probably gonna be my first round. That won't be my last round. My last round will probably be my slowest round. Um, but there's just an idea of pacing. So when I go into a workout like this, I have an idea of what it should look like. That way I know what a good score will be for myself. Now, I may not stick to this, 
and this would be thrown out the door within the first round. But at least I know, okay, well I tried 215, that didn't work, why didn't it work? Okay, well, because this one took longer than normal. Okay, so the next time I do a workout that involves dumbbell hang clean and jerk, single arm, I know, hey, last time I did these, I overestimated my abilities and now I can reset and come up with a better idea. So there's always a, a, a learning curve and a working process when it comes to pacing out workouts. Anyways, guys, that's really it. Um, this is the strength and depth qualifying event number three. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions relating to these tips or questions relating to the workouts, feel free to hit me up on either Instagram or YouTube or challenge me or wherever you may find me. I'll be around and uh, so will Winston. Anyways, everyone have a good day. We'll talk to you guys later.